Join Twins K.N. Olu Taiwu, featured authors and speakers at the Vision, Identity, and Purpose seminars. Receive keys that will unlock the door to your discovery of purpose. This is your date with destiny. Welcome to the Vision Guided Life broadcast. My name is Olu Taiwo. I'm here with my brother K Taiwo. We're very glad that you tuned in. We have an exciting, exciting show for you today. A message I believe is going to impact your life. We're going to be talking about vision. Vision is so essential to our lives that we need, we need to grasp a hold of what God is saying concerning us. Kay, would you agree with oh, that? Absolutely would agree with that. Vision is an essential part of our lives and as we delve more into it, we're going to see that and in fact you know we conduct what we call the vip seminars That's true vip stands for vision, vision identity and purpose and purpose seminars but i want to ask you a question why is it important to uh look at the, why do we even do these seminars what's the importance of the seminar there's something we call the destiny zone yes and that's where vision identity and purpose are in perfect alignment yes okay? And when they're in perfect alignment, we say people have hit the bullseye, which is the destiny zone. When one of these three, that's vision, identity, or purpose, is out of sync, then people are going to be in a state of perpetual pause. They're not going to be moving on with what God has for them. So that's why it's, it's essential to understand identity, purpose, and vision. And usually we say vi uh, identity is a foundation yes. for everything we, we talk about because... Well, whoever you identify as your source determines how you see yourself and consequently affects your destiny. In other words, identity speaks of who we are. Yes. Vision is seen from God's point of view. Yes. And purpose deals with the why, why we are here. Absolutely. A lot of people, would you say, do not know why they're here. They don't know. And so they, they, life is like a series of experiments. Absolutely. They try this, they try that. And yes. something you say that's very powerful, you usually say that when a purpose is not known, yes. a person either becomes complacent, complacent about, life about life or pursues an unhealthy obsession. Yes. But we want to delve into vision today. That's right. And specifically, we're going to be dealing with dispelling five vision myths. Vision myths, yes. Very essential. I want to read something here that uh, John Maxwell when he was talking about the subject of, of vision, he talks about a person that was a president of, of Coca-Cola. And I want to read this. It says here, Robert Woodruff, who was the president of Coca-Cola from 1923 to 1955, a 32-year span, cast the following vision for Coca-Cola. Right after World War II, he said, in my lifetime, I want everyone in the world to have tasted Coke. That was his vision for yes. Coca-Cola. True. But it's interesting, when you read the Bible, Paul gives an eternal perspective. So as believers, the perspective that we yes. walk on is not just a temporal No, no. it's perspective. Much, much higher than much that. Much higher. Look at what yes. he says here. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 29, in the New King James Version says, do you, know, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? I like what it says here. Mm. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. Yes. But look at the contrast here. But we for an imperishable crown... Mm. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. So wow, Paul is wow, making a wow. very powerful statement here. Very powerful. In other words, when people are competing, yes. it's for a temporal crown. Right. And in fact, in the days of Paul, they, some of them had the uh, plants yes. that they put as crowns. For the Olympics. For, they had for the Olympics. Yes, the but the thing is that those things with time fade away. Absolutely. But he's saying that, just like we read, the goal of the president of Coca-Cola was to have the whole world yes. partake, of, partake of his product. Right. That was a temporal thing. But yes. we go for something even deeper. Deeper, eternal. Even eternal. Absolutely. I like what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 28, 29, verse 18. verse 18. This is what we teach in our seminars a lot. I wonder if maybe you can give more yes. insight into uh, that. The scripture says that where there is no vision, there's no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. And this is a very well-known passage of scripture, where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. In other words, this is a, 
fundamental scripture about vision. And the reason why it's fundamental is that it shows what vision does. In other words, that passage of scripture doesn't talk about a leader. It talks about the people. When vision is absent, the effect is seen where? In the people. In the people. No, so can, you, can you stop right there? Yes. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Because yes. many times people think when they talk about vision, automatically we start thinking about leadership. That is the automatic assumption people make. They think about a leader. But there are places, continents, where there are leaders. In yeah, positions, in of, positions power. of power. But you don't look at what the leader says. You look at what what countenance, what is the state of the people. If you look at the people and the state of the people is progress, progressive, which means there's a platform that has been set to keep those people, you know, flourishing. But when a leader talks about, uh, runs on, on a list of things he's doing, but you look at the people and you cannot match what the leader is saying with what the people, the kind of conditions the people are living under, then there's no vision present there. Even though there's a leader in a position of, so of power. So leadership in a position of power doesn't necessarily translate into vision. That's correct. And when you want to test, the universal test to test the presence or absence of vision yes. is not just looking at the leader, it's no. looking at the people. Looking at the people. Because the byproduct of a vision is seen in the people. Yes. So if the people still perish, then there's no vision in operation in that place. Even though there's a leadership yes. in power. So you can have a leader without vision, but if you have a visionary leader, Interesting. it will yes. impact the people positively. Yes. yes, that is powerful. Yes, That is powerful. And I'm, I'm sure as you're listening to this program, you're just thinking of scenarios in your mind. It's very important that you just take some time and just uh, meditate on what we're saying here. Vision is essential. We're going to fulfill your destiny. You need to understand God's vision for That's your life. Right. Because God sees the end from the beginning. In other words, there's nothing that takes God by surprise. He's already pre-planned. Hmm. In fact, we read in Ephesians chapter yes. 2, verse 10, it says, We are His workmanship, yes. created in Christ Jesus unto good works, unto good works. which He has before ordained, ordained that, that we should walk, walk in them. Yeah. So we don't just walk randomly. No. It's something that has been preordained for us. That's correct. And in other words, we don't create our purpose. No. We need to we discover it. We discover yes. it. True. A lot of people are trying to run around town, yes. trying to create a sense of worth yes. by what they do. They become yes. performance oriented yes. as opposed to discovering who they are. That's right. That's absolutely true. Yes. And that's why we're going to be talking about some of the things. I believe that I'm sure there's an inexhaustible list of things we could discuss, but we've, uh, I would say, we've reduced it to five striking uh, things that people oftentimes will misconstrue vision as. And before we, before we even go into that, I want you to even give that uh, powerful description, in fact, which we have in our book here. The Vision Guided Life. In fact, we're going to be talking about what we're going to be talking about today. You can get in this book, The Vision Guided Life. It's a powerful book. Mm -hmm. Now, there's something that you usually talk about called the Precision Guided Missile. I want Absolutely. you to, to give that Very illustration. Powerful. Just to il illustrate the power of vision. In the 1940s, uh, during the Second World War, uh, what they would do is they would put like uh, 108 B-17 bombers and an average of 10 men per plane, 108, 10 men per plane, that's 1,080 men that go on a mission, uh, military uh, airstrikes, and the, st the stats were that they would drop say, close to 648 uh, bombs, and only two, only two, had a, uh, now listen to this, only two had a chance of coming close, 96% chance of coming close. close. Not even hitting the not target. Not hitting the target. Close. So they the dropped target. 648 bombs only to have a 96% chance of coming close to its intended target. And then fast track to the 1990s. Oh, be before you even go there. Yes. How many, repeat how many men again? 1,080 men. So all these men are put in harm's way. Yes. And there's no guarantee of success no. in the mission. No. Wow. No. And so when you fast forward to the 1990s, where one or two airmen in one plane, they had a 100% expectation of hitting their target. 100%. 100% expectation of hitting their target. And, and interestingly enough, there was a military leader over 60 years ago that says there's no reason why every bullet fired should not hit his intended target. And I'm sure at the time he made that statement, it looked like, what is he talking about? That can never be possible. Wow. But in the 1990s, that was proven to be true. 
And the ones, the bombs that they use in the 40s are called dumb bombs. And the bombs they use in the 90s are called smart bombs. The dumb bombs were what they call unguided missiles. Unguided. And the ones that are used hit in the miss, 90s. In words, hit yes. or miss. Unguided means yes. hit or miss. Absolutely. And the one in the 90s are called smart bombs or precision guided. Either satellite guided uh, ammunition or there's another one they call laser guided. And they or had a, a level of accuracy that is unknown. I mean before then. So mm -hmm. it just shows you that vision never leaves thing, things the way it, they are. It always seeks to improve things. And one of the, the things you can say is that the difference between 1940s and the 1990s is that there are less people put in arms way to carry out a mission. You see, so that shows you the power of vision. It's not keeping things the way they are, but seeing how things can be even better. That, that, that is so powerful. I'm even thinking, going back to the position of all these men that yes. were put in harm's way. Yes. Wow. Yes. What we're going to be talking about now is so powerful. In our ministry, we like to do what we call compare or contrast because we've discovered this, that once we can identify what a thing isn't, it gives us a better appreciation for what that thing actually is. what that thing actually is. So we're going to be talking about what vision is not. And as we do that, you're going to see the other end. As we make the contrast, That's you'll right. see, you get a, pre, a better appreciation for what it actually is. First thing I have here is vision is not purpose. Yes. How do you explain that? It's, and, and I get a lot of questions about this. It, what's the difference between vision and purpose? That seems to be a question that keeps coming up. Essentially, vision sees the outcome of a fulfilled purpose. In other words, purpose is really the why of a thing, why a thing exists. But purpose, a vision sees what that purpose can accomplish. Repeat that again. Vision sees what a purpose can accomplish. So in other words, if you have an item, that item is, it, we know what the use of that item is. And one of the illustrations we like to talk about a lot of is uh, drinking cups. Yes. If a family says to themselves, you know what, let's develop our own drink, drinking cups. We don't want to go to the store ever again. We want to manufacture our own drinking cups. So they start manufacturing their own drinking cups, right? What is the purpose? It exists to True. drink out of. That's right. But the family next door says, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to produce our own drinking cups. But wait a minute. You know what? We can benefit from our own drinking cups. But our neighbors can benefit from our drinking cup. Our city can benefit from our drinking cup. Our nation. So the scope. The scope. The scope. So vision sees the potential of purpose. So while one family says, you know what, we're going to make drinking cups for ourselves, right? Yes. So both families, both illustrations, they are ex they're doing the same purpose, fulfilling the same purpose, but one has a bigger scope. A bigger scope. Vision is the difference. So you can know your purpose, but still be limited on your scope. Yes. That's what I'm hearing you say. That is exactly what I'm saying. So you can know your purpose and still not have a, a far-reaching impact. Absolutely. So you need God's vision is what Absolutely. you're saying. I, I remember like what happened to us uh, some years ago. We had this Bible library on our website. That library numbered about 14,000 digital pages. But we, we, we used to jokingly say it was gathering digital <laughs> dust That's right. on our website. Yes. And one day, you and I were having this conversation, and you were telling me about the uh, iPhone and the yes. iPhone development. And about, but at that time, it was new. It the was new. The iPhone was new, yes. And, so, and we're having that conversation. Let me give you more perspective. 14,000 pages yes. of Bible libraries, yes. Bible dictionaries. Yes. I mean, and so commentaries. And, and commentary, church history, yes. church history. Wow, a, 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 a scholars goldmine. Yes. But only eight downloads in a whole year. Yes. And I remember we were having that conversation. You told me about iPhone development, and the light bulbs came on. I yes. said, that library gathering digital dust can become an app. Yes. And so we started with the iPhone. So let's even go back to the purpose never changed. Yes. The purpose was for. Uh, biblical studies to yes. help you in yes. understanding the Bible Absolutely. and the history of the Bible. Correct. But when you mention about app development, the lights came on. I said, wait a minute, we can have this as an app. Yes. So we started on the iPhone, then we went to the Android, and we went to all, now we're on all, all the platforms. The platforms yes. All the mobile platforms. Yes. And how many downloads to date? Over a quarter of a million. Over downloads. a quarter of a million. So the purpose never changed. And but by the, the way, scope the changed. scope changed. So we call this app the, 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 Bible, the, scholar. the Bible Scholar. Yes. And it has reached all around the world. Yes. So purpose never changed, but the scope of what we saw, yeah. till that point, all we saw 
was our website. Yes. <laughs> but then when the scope was expanded, we could see ourselves yes. going. And we usually say this statement that the platform you select yes. determines your, your potential, potential reach. reach. Absolutely. You have anything to add to that? Absolutely. I think you said it really well. The platform you select determines your potential reach. And that can be used in any area of life. Because so many times we limit ourselves. We may be doing something that is productive that we may have identified as God's given purpose for our lives. But we have to ask ourselves this question. Are we limiting ourselves to what God's best is? Yes. In other words, I'm doing this on this level. Could, it, could I take it to, to another, another level? level? you know, to reach more people, to have a greater impact. So sometimes we're fulfilling our purpose, but our vision is too limited. Our vision is not as big as it should be. And I'm challenging our audience this uh, morning, as you watch this program, whatever time of the day you wa you're watching this program, and I want to remind you, please DVR this program and watch it over and over again. And even have a friend, invite a friend to come and join you in watching this program because the Very platform crucial. you select determines your potential reach. Yes. So look at yourself and, and say to yourself, this God-given gift that God has given to me, you know, am I putting limits on it that God doesn't want me to put on it? And s make sure you maximize your God-given potential. Yes. So we would establish very clearly that vision is not purpose. Yes. And don't, don't ever confuse uh, the two. Yes. I want to also read what Apostle Paul was talking about, the power yes. of God at, at work in him. And he and Peter were both apostles. Yes. What was the mission of the apostle? Apostle is to, I mean, go ahead and do a special uh, mission yes. sent by Christ. Yes. But look at what Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 8. He says here, For God, who was at work in Peter as an apostle to the circumcised, was also at work in me, as an apostle to the Gentiles. Hmm. So, so there's something interesting here. So Paul is saying that I'm go I have the power of God is at work in me. Mm -hmm. This was a stage in his life, yes. and his focus was on the Gentile nations. Right. On the other hand, Peter had a focus that was on the Jewish nation, but yes. the purpose was the same. It's the same. But it's a scope of yeah. what they saw. So. And how they, how they saw themselves mm. as players very in bringing powerful. about that purpose. Very important. Very, very important. So we have to understand yes. what, how does God see me in the bigger scheme of my, of yes. my destiny. Yes. Very crucial. Yes, and one of the scriptures we like to quote a lot is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse like 27. Yes. And yes. The Bible says that collectively you are the body of Christ, but individually you are members of it, each part severally and distinct each with his own place, place and, and function. function. And that's a powerful scripture because we are both collectively part of the body, but even in that collective body, we have our individual areas of assignment. And that's why it's, un it's important to know your place in Absolutely the body so you can important. fulfill your purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Also, let's deal with the, the other uh, uh, myth yes. that sometimes people just think that when you're walking in vision, mm. I'll just, it will happen by default. Okay. And I found out it, it doesn't, doesn't work that way. <laughs> so the second one we have is vision is not a plan for the unexpected. Yes. In other words, vision is not your backup plan. No. Vision a, is deliberate. It's deliberate. I want to read this. In fact, this, is a, this will bear us out. All of us who have studied American history will find this interesting. It, it says here that Columbus, after the discovery of America, was persecuted by the envy of the Spaniard, Spanish Cortes for the honors which were heaped upon him by the sovereign. And once at a table, when all decorum was banished in the heat of wine, they murmured loudly at the caresses he received, having, as they said, with mere animal resolution, pushed his voyage a few leagues beyond what anyone had chanced to have done before. Columbus heard them. He heard them. Listen to this part. With great patience and taking an egg from the dish, proposed that they should exhibit their ingenuity by making it stand on an end. It went all around, but no one succeeded. Give it me, gentlemen, said Columbus, who then took it and breaking it at one of the ends, it stood at once. They all cried out, why, I could have done that. <laughs> yes, if the thought had struck you. 
replied Columbus. And if the thought had struck you, you might have discovered America. <laughs> I think that's a powerful, powerful, powerful illustration. Look at your life today and ask yourselves, am I deliberate about my purpose? Am I deliberate? Do I have a vision, a clear vision? Or am I just, do I just look at vision as a backup plan? That's right. And we're saying that vision it's is not, not a backup, backup plan. plan. I know you have something to add to that. In other words, let me use a more, another, a more contemporary example. Everyone, I hope, <laughs> who drives a vehicle has car, car insurance, insurance, right? Yes, yes. What is car insurance? It's a plan for, for the, the unexpected. unexpected. No one goes out, at least no one in a Never. sane right, <laughs> right mind goes out and says, I'm, I'm planning to have an accident, to, accident today. No, no one does that. But you have ins that insurance in the unlikely event, unlikely event. that a, an accident should take place. What we are saying is that vision is not like car, car insurance. insurance. Is not something that is you put in a, as a backup plan, like you earlier said. It's something that is very deliberate. You go out to get it. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I remember an incident that yeah. I happened to have, have in 2006 driving yes. in the Tulsa area. And uh, <laughs> my wife and I were going, uh, and we were actually going, my second child, we're going for the prenatal mm -hmm. doctor's visit. Yes. And uh, as we were driving there, all of it, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a glimpse, I saw it from the corner of my eye, a deer, mm. <laughs> and it ran right across the mm. street. Remember Before that? I could maneuver and get the heart in control, I hit the deer. Car, badly damaged. Of course, that was the end of that appointment. Mm -hmm. We couldn't go. But I didn't, we, when we got up that day, our <laughs> mindset is that deliberately we were going for a doctor's visit. That was the plan. That was the plan. But the car insurance kicked in as a plan for the unexpected. Back up. We didn't go there intentionally to hit it here. No, no. You see? So that's how we, when we are living our lives and think about vision, vision is not a backup plan. No, it's not. It's deliberate. And, and many times people tend to live life from a position of, you know, putting things off, not being deliberate about what they do, and they live year after year, moment after moment, and they never step out and do what God has placed within their hearts because for them, vision is a backup plan. And we're saying that that's a myth. That's a myth. You have to be absolutely deliberate absolutely about what deliberate. you do. Absolutely deliberate, deliberate. The next one I want to deal with is vision is not ambition. Wow. That's a big one. Because You see, many times people, especially in the corporate world, they'll talk about, oh, set the goals for the, the projections for the company and all that. But yes. when we come into a biblical framework, yes. vision goes beyond goal setting. Right. As we said, and there's vision, nothing wrong with goal setting. There's nothing wrong. In fact, vision involves goal setting, but it's more than that. Yes. Goal setting and much more. Yes. Right? But not only that, it's not just personal goal setting. There's yes. nothing wrong in setting right. goals for you personally, but the nature of vision is coincides with the nature of God. Yes. Which is others focus. Others focus. Ambition it's is self focus. self focus. It's me rising the corporate ladder, me reaching the pinnacle. Yes. But vision says, yeah, in addition to me, me reaching the, I want to pull other people yes. along with me. Yes. So it's not just an ambition that yes. might be self focused. Yes. Vision has a scope that's others yes. focus. Would you agree? Absolutely. And that's why we always talk about this compare and contrast because sometimes you can be heading on down the road and getting things done, but the ambition question is a question of motive. Yes. So it talks to the motive. Yes. Why are you doing what you're to doing? Do One story comes to mind is in the, the, at the height of the tent revival uh, oh, wow. era. Yes. Um, another evangelist was competing with his fellow evangelists. And he called this evangelist at 3 a.m. in the morning. Mm. And what was, what was this urgent message that couldn't wait? <laughs> All he called to say was, I now have a bigger tent than you do. Wow. That's why he interrupted wow. his fellow so evangelist. So for somebody from the outside looking at the bigger tent, they're saying, wow. A big tent can big reach, tent can reach more, more people, people which yes. on the surface, but the motive, the motivation was wrong. he saw his fellow evangelist as, as his com competition. Competitor, yes. Instead of seeing him as a co-laborer for yes. a bigger vision, vision bigger than himself, yes. it became so personal yes. that he woke him up at 3, three in the morning. That's what ambition does because he wow. was self-focused. Self-focused. He wasn't focused on what that tent would do. He yes. was looking at it more from the stats. 
Wow. You have a tent, but mine is <laughs> mine is bigger. Wow. So wow. that's ambition at work. I think that illustrates it very. I clearly. want to read this scripture that uh, Apostle Paul gives here in Second Corinthians chapter ten and verse twelve. It says here, we do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they they are are not not wise. wise. That speaks for itself. That speaks for (laughs) itself. We're not competing with one another. No. It's a greater vision. It's not an ambition based on what I want to to do and I'm trying to uh, one-up you. That's not what what vision does. That's not what vision does. At least not from God's perspective. Right. And then the fourth myth about vision, vision is not a program. You want to elaborate more Vision is not a program. Now, certainly, if I have a program and I have a series of programs, those programs can facilitate a vision. A vision. It can be used to enhance a vision. But a program in and of itself is not not vision vision because... A program without vision is the equivalent of babysitting adults. Isn't that something? A program without vision, I repeat, yeah. is the equivalent, equivalent of, of baby babysitting sitting adults. adults. Time is going by, hmm. but nothing is getting nothing done. Nothing productive is getting so done. So it's not a program. There's nothing wrong with a program, but we have to make sure that uh, we're we are coming from a perspective of vision. Absolutely. Our vision is driving our programs. Absolutely. Yes, I know you have good. something to add to that. I think that that says it all because I, it actually reminds me of a case where we... Um, got acquainted with this ministry uh, as in a friendship and we for over a period of a year we're wondering what is the vision of this operation and we never knew it never knew it then we got a list and the list had about 30 things on it that kept highlighted different things they did and even after we read the list we still asked ourselves the question what is the vision because there were a lot of disjointed things happening they were busy but still, it was not. There was no cohesive vision that brought them all together. So, vision is not necessarily a program. Yes. Yes. And then we have finally, vision is not a dream. Yes. I think that's also self-explanatory. Vision. You can be a dreamer. There's nothing wrong with dream. In fact, we have this statement that we say that every visionary is a dreamer, but not every dreamer, dreamer is, a, is visionary. a visionary. Because dreamers can just be. All, I mean, wishy and yes. thinking about what, oh, I, I wish, I wish, one I day, wish. One day, one day, one day. day but, one the, never but the take visionary action. takes action yes. and makes it happen. Makes it happen. Very good. Thank you for tuning in to the Vision Guided Life. We know you've been blessed. Remember that transformation, transformation takes, takes place, place through identification, identification with Christ. Christ. We want to thank all our partners for your prayers and financial support. We also want to extend this invitation to those of you watching who want to become vision partners to help us take this message around the world. To become a vision partner, call toll-free 1-844-334-2197 or visit visionforlifeministries.org. What you need today is vision. Without it, we perish. But vision is more than just ambition, setting goals, or planning to win in life. Vision is the nature of God in you that can stop the devil's attacks, restore what was destroyed, and where God can move in your situation, transforming your life, putting things back in order, and redeeming the years the locusts have eaten. In the acclaimed book, Vision Guided Life, discover how God has placed inside of you a unique vision to positively impact your world and transform your life in Christ to fulfill your purpose. This book by international speakers, lecturers, life coaches, and authors Kay and Olu Taiwo will help you push the start button on life. As part of today's powerful offer, Kay and Olu want you to have the DVD of today's show and receive the book, The Vision Guided Life. 